We continue now at the top of Daf Nun Beis Amid Aleph in Maseches Kiddushin. This is Kiddushin Daf 52a. And the previous summer, the Gemara asked a question from a Mishnah in Yavamas and Rava's opinion. Rava's opinion is that Kiddushin Shein Mesur and Labia is not considered Kiddushin. If you have a Kiddushin that cannot lead to a permitted act of relations, that is not a good Kiddushin. And the question was from the Mishnah in Yavamas. The Mishnah in Yavamas is talking about a situation of two men. They are not related to one another. And they get married to two sisters, but they don't know which sister they each married. Originally, the Gemara thinks that from the outset, they don't know which sister each of them had Kiddushin with. And that's why the Gemara says that the Mishnah over there treats it like a Suffolk. So the Gemara says it seems like Kiddushin Shein Mesurin Libya is a good Kiddushin. It seems like a question on Rava. The Gemara then says that is not the situation. What actually is the case is that they get married. Each one gets married to one of the sisters and it is clear at the time of the marriage who the Kiddushin was with. It just gets mixed up later on. In any case, the case is that the two men, they both die. One of the men has one brothers. One of the men has one brother and the other one has two brothers. And so the question is, how do you deal with Chalitz and Yibam over here? And the Gemara says that that's the Chiddush. The Chiddush is how you deal with Chalitz and Yibam. It's obvious that we treat it as a Suffolk, but the, the Chiddush is the end of the Mishnah. And again, now the Gemara brings the end of the Mishnah. Ha'echad cholitz l'shtein. It means to say that one brother, meaning the one who died who had just one brother, now that one brother is alive, that brother has to do chalitza to both sisters. Because again, he doesn't know which one of the sisters actually was married to his deceased brother. Ba'ashnayim, and then the two brothers. So echad cholitz v'echad miyavim. So one does chalitza and one does yivam. And as we said on the previous summit, there was a similar Mishnah. It has to be specifically in that order. First one of them does chalitza and then the other one is allowed to do Yibam. And then the Mishnah says, Im kid in no son If they go ahead and they both marry, so then we don't force them to divorce, because again, as we said on the previous Ambud, at most what you have over here is a minor violation. And the Gemara says, and that's the Chiddush of the Mishnah, Davka Michlatz Vahadar Yivumeid has to specifically be first the Chalitza is done, and then the Yibam. Aval Yibumei Vahadar Michlatz Lo, but to do the Yibam first and then the Chalitza, that would be a problem. Why? To Kapaga be Yivama Because in this case, you might have a situation where he's actually marrying a Yivama, meaning to say the Yivama was supposed to marry her brother in law, but now if this is not her brother in law, it's going to be a problem of Yivama Lashuk, a Yivama marrying someone without doing Chalitza. And Rashi explains, and the one brother, he does chalitza with both of the sisters, because he's not able to marry either of the sisters, because then you have a problem. It's possible that the one he's marrying is the one he's supposed to do yibam with. That would be fine. But it's also possible it's the sister of the one he's supposed to do yibam with. And that, as we said on the previous summit, is an Isramid Rabbonin of Achos Zakuka, the sister of the one he's bound to. And if, even if he does chalitza with that one that he's bound to, it is still considered Achos Chalutza, and it's an and then the other brother, the other one where there are two brothers, so first one of the brothers does chalitza, and then the other brother is able to do yibam, Davka Katani, and then the Gemara said it has to be specifically in this order, first the Chalitza, then the Yibam, and the way Rashi explains this is Davka goes even on the one brother going first. Ha'echad Cholitz L'shtei and Tchila, that one brother, he's got to do Chalitza to both sisters first. V'hadar Yivumei Achas Me'ashtayim, Achar Chalitza Zachev, and then that other one after he does Chalitza, when the one with two brothers, when one of the brothers does Chalitza, so then the second brother is able to do Yibam. Only at the very end of the whole process can that second brother do Yivam with the remaining sister. But to do Yivam with one of the two first, even after the Chalitza of his own brother, meaning let's say with the two brothers, so one of the brother does Chalitza with one of the sisters and then one of the brothers does Yivam, but that other lone brother didn't do anything, that would be a problem. Now even though you've taken care of the issue of Achos Zekuka, there is no problem of the sister of the one that he was supposed to do Yivam with, that's not a problem because his brother already did Chalitza with that one, low listry, but it still would not be okay, it still would not be permitted, since that other lone brother didn't do the chalitzas that he was supposed to do. Because since that individual brother didn't do chalitza to both of them, so now we have a concern that the brother who's doing the yibam with that sister, maybe that's really supposed to be, maybe that's really the sister-in-law of that lone brother, the yibam's supposed to be with her, or the chalitza supposed to be with her, so nimtza, with him and her, so nimtza konsa, so it ends up that he's marrying her, no say Yivama Lashuk, the one who's marrying her is actually marrying a Yivama sister-in-law who's just marrying outside. She's supposed to take care of either do the Yibam with the one she's supposed to do the Yibam with or take care of it by doing Chalitza with that with that lone brother, but she hasn't taken care of it, so it's a problem of Yivama Lashuk. Yivama Lashuk means that you're the sister-in-law is 
marrying the person who is not her brother-in-law. And she's doing that without chalitza. Now Rashi points out, before on the previous summit, the Chiddush was that when you have the two brothers, that one brother who does the chalitza has to go before the brother who does the Yibam. Maybe that's the Chiddush of this Mishnah. Why are we specifically saying the Chiddush of this Mishnah is that the lone brother has to do chalitza with both sisters first, and then you start the process of the two brothers. But you can't say that the Chiddush is that the process of the two brothers is a Chiddush, because the lowest that wouldn't be needed. And that we already learned from the Reish of the Mishnah. That was in the previous Amma. They already learned from the beginning of that Mishnah in Yivamas that Chiddush. So it has to be an additional Chiddush over here. And again, what's the additional Chiddush over here? So in this case, you have a situation where there's two men, they're not related, and one of them has one brother. That's the lone brother. The Chiddush is that lone brother has to do the Chalitza to the two sisters first. That's the Chiddush. Otherwise, you might have a situation of Yivam Lashuk, And then you do the same process of the previous Amma with the person person who died that has the two brothers, again, first one of the brothers does chalitza with one of the sisters, and then the remaining brother is able to do yivam with the remaining sister. And the Gemara continues, Tashma, come in here, approve, Tatani, Tevyume, because Tevyume taught in a b'risa, Lazech hamisha bonim v'lazech hamisha bonos, if this one has five sons, and this man has five daughters, V'yomar achas mi b'nosechom mekudeshes l'echon mi and then one of the fathers says to the other that one of your daughters should be mekudeshes to one of my sons, doesn't make it clear which one, so every single daughter is going to require five gitten because she might be married to any one of those sons. And if one of them should die, so every single one is going to need four gitten. And they're also going to need chalitza from one of them because it's possible that it's her husband that died and therefore there's a requirement of yibam over here. And the Gemara says, so you see from here a proof against Rava, because you have a situation of a Kedushin She'in Misurin Labia, and it seems like it is a Kedushin. There is a doubt for each and every one whether it's a good Kedushin. And the Gemara says, V'chitem, and if you're going to say like we answered in all the other cases, Hachanami Keshukru Levasof Nisarvu, that here also, the cases that originally we know which son was Mekadish, which daughter, but then it got mixed up, but Ha'achas Mi Benosechol Echel Mi Banai Katani, but that's not true, because the whole language of this Brisa is that one of your daughters should be Mekudeshes to one of my sons. So from the outset, we really have no idea, and it's a Kiddush and Shein Mesur and Labiyah. And the Gemara says, to Yufta de Rava, to Yufta, the Gemara says, indeed, this is a refutation of Rava. Should we say it's a refutation of Rava? Yes, it is a refutation of Rava. And the Gemara says, V'hilchitsa kevasei de Abaya, and the Halacha is like Abaya. Again, this was a dispute between Abaya and Rava in terms of the Kiddush and Shein Mesur and Labiyah. Abaya says it is a Kiddush, and the Halacha is like Abaya, that it's a good Kiddush. The Halacha is like Abaya, Biyal Kagam, Yal Kagam is a mnemonic to remember the six cases that the Halacha is like Abaya. And Rashi says, Yal Kagam, Simone Halacha, saying again, this is a mnemonic of the six Halacha, Shenech Leku Behem Abaya Verova, where Abaya and Rava argue, Vechol Mokam Halacha Kerova, in all places the Halacha is like Rava against Abaya, Chutz Me'ela, with the exception of these six cases. And the six cases are Yir Shalom Idas Be'elu Metziah, case of Yir Shalom Idas and Bab Metziah, V'yed Zomem Abayah Amar Lema Freya, who nifsel Meperek Zeborer in Sanhedrin, Abayah says the Yed Zomem is disqualified retroactively, Lechi Omeid Me'elu Meperek Hamed De'erev, in the case of the Lechi that stands on its own in Erevin, Kiddushin Shalom Nimsur Labiyah V'shmaitin, that's our case of Kiddushin Shalom Nimsur Labiyah, that's the Kuf, Giloi Daita Begita Basholeach, revealing one's knowledge by Get, that's in Gitin, and Mumar Ochel Nevelos Lateyav, in the case of a Mumar who eats non kosher Lateyav, for the desire of it, the Perak Zebora and Perak Zebora. Again, those are the six cases where the halach is like Abaye and not like Rava. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Maisa Bechamish Nashim, there was an incident with five women. The case over there was, again, among the five women, there were two sisters, and a man takes a basket of figs from their field, and it's the Shemitah year, and he gives it to one of the five women who's acting as a Shliach for the others, and he says that with this basket of figs, I'm being Mekadesh, all of you, and it's not considered a good Kiddushan, because again, among the five women, there are two sisters. And there was a machlokas between Abai and Rava. How do you understand the case? Is it that it's only not a good Kedushin because he was trying to be Makadish all five of them at once? But if he would have said one of the two sisters, so then it would have been a good Kedushin. Or do we say no, even if he would have said one of the two sisters and we don't identify which one, that still would not have been a good Kedushin because that's Kedushin Shein Misur and Labia. That's, that's how Rava understood that Kedushin Shein Misur and Labia is not considered to be a good Kedushin. And the Gemara says, Oh my Rav, Rav says, Shmami Nami Masnis and Arba. We see from our mission of four Kedushin. However, Vinokit Rav Biyodet Tlos, but Rav only held in his hand three of the four Kedushin. 
And Rashi explains, V'nakid Rav biyad etzlas, Rav held in his hand three of the four chidushim, L'shalosh mehen haya ochsen biyadu l'sadrin b'seder gersaso, three of them he held in his hand, he arranged it in his teachings. Aval haraviyas lo haysa muchzekas biyadu, but that fourth one it wasn't clear, l'sadr b'gersas ha-gemar, so he didn't, he didn't uh, organize it in his arrangement of his teaching on the Gemara. And the Gemara now says, what are the chidushim shmami? No, you see from our Mishnah, ha-mekadesh b'peiro shviyas mekudeshes, that if somebody is mekadesh, a woman, with the fruits of shviyas, that is a good kiddushin, that's exactly what's happening. These figs are figs of shviyas. Ushma mina kitsha begezel ena mekudeshes. And you see that if he's mekadesh or was something that's stolen, that would not be a good kiddushin. Afilo begezel didoi, even if it's something stolen from her, how do we know that? Mimai, from where do we know that? Midikatani shalohem haisa, vishel shviyas haisa. It says it was their field, but it says it was the Shemitah year. So time at the Shviyas to Hefker, the only reason it was a good Kiddushin was because it was it was the Shemitah year, and it was fruits of Hefker. Hadishar Shnei Shavua, but if it would be from the other years, lo, then no, it would not be a good Kiddushin, because it would be Gezel, it would be stealing, and you see from the Mishnah that if a man is Mekadesh, a woman, with something that is stolen, it is not a good Kiddushin. Ushma Minam, we also see Isha Nasis Shliach Lechaverta, that one woman can be a Shliach for her friend to accept a Kiddushin on her behalf. The Afilu B'Makam Shnasis Lotzari, even in a situation where that woman would be her co-wife. Maybe you would say a person can't be a shliach for someone who's her co-wife, but we see from this case, no, even in a situation of co-wives, one can be a shliach for the other. And the Gemara says, V'idach mayhi, now what was the fourth possible chiddush that we learned from the Mishnah? And that's exactly what we discussed above, Kiddushin Shein Mesur and Labia, the chiddush would be Kiddushin Shein Mesur and Labia, to show that it's not a good Kiddushin. And the Gemara says, V'nechshva, well, why don't we count that as one of the Kiddushim? And the Gemara says, no, he didn't count that, Misham de Mesaf Galei, Ike Abayi Kerava, because we really have a suffix, we really have a doubt over here, do we learn the Mishnah like Abaya, or do we learn the Mishnah like Rava? In which case, again, since we don't know exactly how to learn the Mishnah, we don't know what exactly the Mishnah is saying when it comes to Kiddushin Shein Misur and Labiyah. And Rashi explains, HaMekadesh B'Peiro Shviyas Mekudeshes, if someone is Mekadesh with the fruits of Shviyas, that is a good Kiddushin. V'lo Amrinan Lav Memono Dezocha Benin, we don't say, well, it's not his mom and it's not his monetary, it doesn't belong to him, therefore it's not a good Kiddushin. Ela Keva Dezocha Behen Memono, who once he takes possession of it, it is considered his mom. L'chol Davar for all purposes. Inami Delotema Lo'ach Lo'amar Achman Velo Ledavar Acher, or you could say the Kiddush is, you might think that the, the Peiro Shviyas are meant to be eaten, but not to be used for anything else. And again, the Kiddush is no, you could use the Peiro Shviyas, that is a good Kiddushin, but if it's stolen, that would not be a good Kiddushin, even if it's stolen from her, Rashi says, we don't say from, from the fact that she accepted it, therefore she was Mochel maybe, and maybe it shouldn't be considered a problem, because it was her property originally, she was Mochel to the man, and now the man is Mekadish, or with it, we don't say that, we say it's considered to be stolen property, and therefore it's not a good Kiddushin, and then we said that one woman can be a Shliach for another, even even in a situation where she's a co-wife. Now, even though by testimony, when we say that in general, any kind of testimony that a woman is allowed to do, we don't believe a co-wife in that situation because she hates the other wife. But when it comes to shlichus, when it comes to being an agent on her behalf, since she was a shliach, that's effective. Because in this case over here, where there were five women, so in these kedushin, they're all becoming like co-wife wives to each other. Al Yedezu Shekibla through this one that's receiving it, the Katani Nachrios Mekudoshos. It says that in this case, the ones who are not sisters, they are all Mekudoshos. It was just the sisters that aren't. And so again, therefore you see, even where they're becoming co-wives, we see that it's not that it's going to be a good agency. It's going to be a good Shlichos. And the Gemara says, V'nech Rav Nami Laha. But why doesn't Rav also count this last, this, this last Chiddush of Kiddush and Shem Mesur and Labia? Why were there only three of them? Hanami Shem don't we also see that Kiddushin Shein Mesur and Labia is not a good Kiddushin? And the Gemara answered, Mesaf Galei Ike Abaya, Rav had a suffix, is it like Abaya or is it like Rava? Meaning Abaya said, Demuki Lo Bebasachas. Abaya said the case of the mission is that the Kiddushin happens to all of them at once. Shekidesh Shtei and he's Mekadesh, both of them, meaning both sisters at one time. Hakidesh Achas Mehen Mekudeshes, but if he would have been Mekadesh, one of the two sisters, according to the way Abaya understands the mission, it would have been a good Kiddushin. V'yaf 
Agav Delo Pirush, even though he didn't explain which sister. Ushma Amina have a Kiddushin. If you learn the Mishnah that way, so then you see that Kiddushin Shein Misurin Labia is a good Kiddushin. V'i Karava, or you could learn the Mishnah like Rava, Demuki Vishalo Kiddush Ala Achas, where he was only Makadish, one of the two sisters. That's the case. And so therefore, according to Rava, exactly that's the Kiddush of the Mishnah, that Kiddushin Shein Misurin Labia is not going to be a good Kiddushin. Ulachi Amar Rav, Shma Amina Mimasnis and Arba. And Rav said, the reason why Rav said that we see four things from the Mishnah, Devada Kiddushin. We certainly learned something about Kiddushin Shalom Nimsur Labi. It's just unclear what we learn. But we can't make it clear. It's not clear which one of the two things we learn. Do we learn that Kiddushin Shain Misur and Labia is not Kiddushin? Or do we learn that Kiddushin Shain Misur and Labia is Kiddushin? That depends on how you learn the Mishnah, whether you learn it like Abaya or Rava. You have a Kiddushin, you have a Kiddushin. Again, we don't know exactly whether it is a good Kiddushin or it is not a good Kiddushin. And the Gemara continues, Kisolik Rabbi Zeira, when Rabbi Zeira went up to Eretz Yisrael, Umra Lo Hashmaita Kami de Rabbi Yochanan. He said over this teaching of Rav in front of Rabbi Yochanan. Amar Leisar, Rabbi Yochanan said to him, Mi Amar Rav Hachi, did Rav really say that if a person is Makadish with Gezel, that it's not a good Kiddushin? And the Gemara says, Vuhu lo Amar, but he didn't say that. Doesn't Rabbi Yochanan agree? Vamar Rabbi Yochanan, but Rabbi Yochanan himself said, Gezel v'lo nesi aisha b'aylim, if someone steals, but the original owner doesn't give up hope on it, Shneim einam yecholim l'hakdash, both of them are not able to use the item for Kiddushin. Zelafi she'eno shalom, the person who stole, he can't use it because it's not his item. Vizelafi she'eno b'rishusu, and the other one, meaning the original owner, he can't use it because it's no longer in his rishus. It's no longer in his possession. So you see Rabbi Yochanan also holds he can't be Kaddish with Gezel. So why was Rabbi Yochanan so surprised that Rav said that? And the Gemara says, Hachi Kamarle, this is what Rabbi Yochanan was saying to him. He was saying, Mi Omar Rav Kivasi, does Rav really say? Like I say, of course, that's what I hold as well. But Rabbi Yochanan was surprised that Rav agreed with him. And the Gemara continues, Mesa, we have the following question. Kitsha begezel bechamas of geneva. Let's say he's Makadish or was something that's stolen. Or chamas, chamas is when you steal, but you pay for it. You force the person to, to sell you, to sell you the item. Rashi says, chamsan yoiv deme al korcho shal bal chafetz. A chamsan, he gives money, but he gives it against the will of the person who owns it. He forces the person to sell him the item. Uve geneva, again, something that's stolen. O shachataf sela miyada vikitsha. Let's say he grabs a sela from her, from the woman, and he uses that to be Makadish. In all of these cases, says the Brisa Mikudeshes, it is a good Kiddushin. And so the Gemara says, you see from this Brisa, you see from this Tosefta, that even with Gezel, it is a good Kiddushin, not like Rabbi Yochanan, not like Rav. And the Gemara answers Hasam over there, Begezel Dida, the case is he's stealing, but he's stealing from her. And when he's stealing from her, maybe it is a good Kiddushin, maybe it's different because she's Mochel. But the Gemara says, Hamidikatani Sefer, but from the fact that it says at the end of that Brisa, O Shechotav Sela Mishala, that he takes her Sela, Michlal Derecha Begezel Dial Maskin, and that's Sounds like it's saying that the first cases of the Brisa is not when he stole from her, but he stole from other people. So how can we answer that the cases that he stole from her? And the Gemara says you can explain the Brisa as follows: Perusha Kamafarish. It could be the Brisa is explaining what it means. Kitsha begezel bechamus uvegeneva. What does it mean? Kitsha begezel bechamus uvegeneva. Keitzad how so? Kagon shechatav selam yadav kitsha bo that he takes. For example, he takes a sella from her and he uses that for a kiddushin. It could be that's what the Brisa means all along. And Rashi says begezel dida was something he. He stole from her. Kaven to kibilte achilte again when she received it. She's essentially being mochel. Well, the kamon parach. Now the gemara later will ask. Harav nami begezel dida kamar. How could we answer that the brayse is talking about gezel dida? Rav said even by gezel dida, it's not a good kiddushin. So it would still be a question on Rav. Even if we say the brayse is saying that by gezel dida, it is a good kiddushin. Again, that would go against Rav, who said that that is not a good kiddushin. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Nun Beis Amud Beis.